security professionals of the mining industry, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to welcome you to the fifth edition of the Chamber of Mines interaction with public security agencies and the judicial service. These two institutions are indispensable to our collective efforts and shared aspiration to promote an orderly democracy and safeguarding our constitutional rights to make a living in this country. As you well know, the rule of law is key to attracting indigenous and foreign private capital, a critical factor in the country's endeavor to create an enabling environment to foster shared prosperity and accelerate broad-based development. Indeed, not a lot of nations in our modern era have sustainably improved the economic well-being of its people without the participation of the private capital or the private sector. At the same time, the attraction and retention of private capital is partly premised on enforcement of statutes relating to property rights. It is against this backdrop that the Chamber regularly interacts with its stakeholders in the public security sector and judicial service to deliberate on issues that confront them in the exercise of their statutory mandate and explore solutions to them. Honorable Minister, the headline contributions of the mining industry in terms of fiscal payments, foreign exchange and employment are well documented. In the last 10 years alone, for instance, the minerals and mining sector's contribution to direct domestic fiscal receipts was in excess of 12 billion Ghana cities, which translates into an average share of 18.4% of the direct domestic revenue mobilized by the Ghana Revenue Authority. In the same vein, the mining industry has also been the country's primary source of foreign exchange and from the export of commodities. It accounted for more than 40% of the country's export earnings in the last decade alone. It is obvious that the health of the mineral sector has a significant and direct impact on the stability of our local currency. Regarding employment, the minerals and mining sector is estimated to provide employment to about 1% of the country's workforce directly. This excludes the indirect contribution in terms of employment that these direct employment opportunities generate. In spite of its stellar macroeconomic contributions, the mineral sector plays an equally important role in the microeconomy, which are often not highlighted in the national discourse. A classic example relates to the sourcing practices of the chamber's member companies and their consequent spillover effect on local businesses and the larger economy. Specifically, these member companies deliberately organize their production processes to obtain inputs from in-country manufacturers or suppliers in order to retain a greater portion of the value chain of these businesses in the local or domestic economy. This local content drive by our member companies results in outcomes that stimulate the services, manufacturing, and fabrication sectors. Taking into account the multiplier effect of this retained value in the local economy does magnify the benefits even further. To put it in, into perspective, between 2015 and 2018, our producing member companies spent about $7.3 billion on inputs procured from local sources, and this figure excludes labor and capital items. For the mining industry to sustain and even improve on the contribution to the state and other stakeholders, it requires a peaceful and conducive climate to thrive. The importance of security to the industry cannot be overemphasized. Honorable Minister, it is in that regard that I seize the opportunity to highlight the timely and important contributions of our member companies in supplementing the efforts of the state to deliver public security services. 
Most of our members provide logistics to the various public security agencies and support them to develop their infrastructure. For instance, the mine that I manage, Anglo Gold Ashanti Obuasi, donated two new vehicles worth in excess of 400,000 Ghana cities to the Obuasi District and Divisional Police Commands. I also had the privilege of leading a delegation of chamber members to present 30,000 US dollars to the police administration to support the transformation project of the police service. Indeed, it is not uncommon for the other mines and mining, service, mining support service companies to assist the state security agencies with vehicles, communication equipment, fuel, residential and office accommodation. More so, the chamber and its members contribute immensely to enhancing the capacity of public security officers through their biannual seminar for judges and prosecutors. The chamber recognizes that although it is the primary responsibility of the state to provide security, corporations and other economic actors also have a complementary role to play in the delivery of public security services. This conviction underlies the choice of the team for this year's event, supporting the state security agencies to deliver effective protection services, the role of the private sector. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sure you would no doubt agree with the Chamber, or you would no doubt agree that the Chamber and its members have demonstrated goodwill and exemplary commitment in supporting the state to enhance the capacity of its public security services to protect life and property. Against this backdrop, it would only be appropriate for the government to provide security for assets of responsible mining firms such as our members, as it has and continues to do for other high-value investments in the country. Unfortunately, the decision of the government to withdraw its public security officers, particularly the soldiers, from the mines in general, has culminated in a deterioration of the security climate of these mines and the adjoining communities that these mines operate in. While the chamber acknowledges and respects the government's prerogative in deploying public security officers to protect high value investments, we respectfully suggest that it must, it must not be done in a manner that makes the business community worse off. The current strategy of government to deploy its security officers to a mine only after the occurrence of serious incidents does not augur well for the operations of our members and the strategic interests of the state. Indeed, the state owns shares in most of these companies. It is common knowledge that the private security guards that our member companies contract are not equipped and trained to handle the threat posed by the armed illegal miners and other miscreants who pose grave, grave challenges to the rule of law and the country's reputation as the bastion of mining in the West Africa sub-region and indeed in the larger continent. The occurrence of such preventable incidents is likely to intensify as we approach next election year, or 2020 a period that traditionally coincides with a rise in illegal mining activities and other forms of intrusions on the concessions of our member companies. It is in this regard that we appeal to the government to reconsider its stance on the deployment of public security officers to the concession of mining companies. A reversal of the decision to pull out state security personnel from the mines would not only affirm the government's touted commitment to creating a secured environment for businesses, but also provide assurance to current and potential investors in Ghana's mining sector. This will be particularly appropriate in the light of the worrying security developments in most mining jurisdictions in the West Africa sub-region. In bringing my address to a close, I wish to assure the government of the Chamber's support in its quest to create alternative livelihood programs for people in mining towns. As a matter of fact, 
The Chamber and its members have already undertaken similar projects in their respective operational areas, which will complement the government's initiative in that regard. The government recently launched the community mining program at Wasa Ekrupon in the Western region. The rationale for the program is to set up community mines in each of the mining districts in the country. The community mines are expected to provide employment to more than 4,500 miners who have been trained by the government at the University of Mines and Technology in Takwa. It was reported at the launch of the CMP that the Minerals Commission had acquired several zones in each of the mining districts for this purpose. However, we are mindful of the unintended outcome of some people abusing the initiative to undertake illegal mining activities and encroaching on the concessions of some of our mines. Some of these illegal miners are forcefully possessing portions of the concessions belonging to mining companies and mounting billboards and signages with inscriptions of community mining. These actions have dire consequences on operations of the mines and negatively affect the image of the mining sector. Expectedly, we have drawn government's attention to this development and we look forward to a swift resolution to bolster investor confidence. I am persuaded that the discussions that will ensue at this forum will improve the collaboration among public security agencies, the judicial service, and the mining industry to enhance their respective contributions to the development of our beloved country.